Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very special, very happy, a very blood red, or perhaps green dildo Valentine's Day today. As you can see, it's a very special day. I've shaved myself so I can start to get through airports once again. And also want to be wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. Always wish you well as Bitcoin entering the good old holiday of... Mr. Valentine. So let's get in the live scene right over here. And uh, really nothing's changed in the last, I mean, since, since we last spoke, really in the last uh, four or five days. In fact, I actually left all my drawing tools up here. So let's just uh, actually scroll down into the lower time frames and just put them right back on again. Uh, this is, you know, this is the picture as it stands. Bitcoin essentially hanging out in the 618 Fibonacci retracement, also this horizontal level, which is also your daily 21 exponential. That is where the, that is the area of battle going down right now. And as long as Bitcoin is around here, you know, it does feel like pressure's on. Would I be taking shorts right here absolutely not until it actually breaks the only the only way that it take a short is a, is if you know is if we break support or if we go back and test a resistance but looks to me like we've actually tested this one quite a few times already uh again it's taking a stab at uh, 3750 on friday then again at this more immediate intermediate area at the uh, mid 3600 range so again looking at this descending trend line that we've been you know living under for the last uh what is it you know three months now uh, ever since uh, middle of november well Nothing's really changed as far as the higher time frames go. Now, with the advent of what happened on Friday on this nice green dildo party right here that we witnessed live together, which was very, very fun. Don't get me wrong about that, but uh, it's still nothing has really changed. And with that, we can now actually make an ascending trend line. And I could even put in some nice horizontals coming back from this uh, this historic area right around 3350. So I would be pretty damn comfortable with relating Bitcoin as either a bear pennant or a descending triangle, both typically bearishly resolved formations doesn't mean that they always break out to the downside i mean of course i've seen every fucking pattern break out everywhere that it's quote unquote not supposed to by you know the pattern god's uh willings um so again i'm not really a huge pattern trade i don't care all that much about it but when i have a bearish formation in a bearish market typically you know going to be pretty happy to play that so i am still holding a short that i entered in on my main account yes uh yesterday from about 36 19 didn't get a perfect entry but good enough is good enough and uh, and i'll be holding that as long as we're essentially below 3600 i'm happy Happy to hold that position now it is getting a little bit hairy in the lower time frames this is your four hour dildo time frame and our stokes our oscillators are you know they, they're still they're, they're they're still situated down and in the bearish control zone but they do feel a little bit tired um as bitcoin's really taking its time around this area and you can see that the 200 exponential this purple moving average here on the four hour dildo time frame really getting the overall support of this and the more that bitcoin stays around here it does offer up the chance for a bart as that's typically when we do see these things go down or or in this case it would be up um, of course, higher time frames, nothing's changed. You know, you got your eight hour, uh, your, your eight hour right over here. Again, uh, Stokes on this guy have been heading down for the last uh, two, three days and still headed down right now, actually gaining momentum to the downside. We got our eight hour RSI trending well below the exponential right here. And again, you know, just, just also in between the bearish control zone. And every time that it tries to get into the bullish control zone, it just gets rejected. Um, what else do we have to look at? 12 hour, 12 hours still situated down. Uh, could it be losing momentum? I, you know, I could go both ways on this one. Obviously you don't play it before it happens, but when I do look at a slightly lower time frame, like a 10 hour, and we're still gaining momentum to the downside, I'm going to imagine that barring any sort of a major run up, you know, as long as we're Below 3600, that will still be situated down. So you know our, our medium to high time frame oscillators are still suggesting down right here. We our 12 hour RSI actually did just break the exponential for the first time since uh, since before that February 8th rally. So again, uh, it does feel like pressure is a mounting. We do have uh, all moving averages converging essentially on this 3550 ish area, which I will denote by this horizontal trend line, which is also a 618 Fibonacci retracement. I mean, it's not just the 12 hour exponentials that are coming in right around here, but it's also the daily, you know, 21 and 10, which if those actually do cross the upside, that typically is a decent signal in my experience. Um, however, the thing is, is that when you're trading, when, when you're trading like overall counter trend, and this would be an example of that trading, a, you know, basically it, it would be a bullish cross in an overall bearish market. Those don't work out as well as the bearish crosses in a bearish market and vice versa, uh, vice versa for a bullish market. Um, but but as you can see right here, you know, Bitcoin really flailing around this area. And typically speaking, when you do get, you know, a hint of these areas kind of converging on each other, that's when that's when resolution is right around the corner. So I actually do believe that we should be getting resolution on this formation 
pretty damn soon. I'd I'd feel comfortable saying within the next two weeks, two to three weeks now. Um, I know I've been saying you know relatively soon when we're looking at price action over the course of about three months. Um, that's that is relatively soon to me. Two to three weeks. Um, you know, it depends. Are we making some sort of a bear pennant, which has a an apex in early March, March tenth actually to be exact, or are we making a descending triangle, which if we just extend this a little bit further and use thirty three fifty as the support trend line, well that would have an apex a little bit later in uh, in in March, but still around the corner, around the same time. Remember when these things get relatively full, like around sixty nine percent full or more, they become extremely likely to likely to explode, and with the advent of this last rejection off the green 55 exponential and the failure to get back above essentially the five, which, you know, you can see that the bots and algos are just selling these areas and getting and walking down the market. Yes, I am leading for this to break out to the downside. Of course, it's a fucking bear market. So I'm always going to take the downside when in doubt. But that also means that Bitcoin will change around the lower time frames if it actually can take out this uh, this 3700 area right here. So if it can take that area out, you know, technically speaking, you would have resistance at the 3900 level, 3850. What you know, it's basically the same fucking number as far as I'm concerned. But I, my, my opinion is that at that point in time, it probably does initiate a run into the low 4,000s. Um, of course, that is, you know, I'm not leaning towards that happening really, but that's that's how I'd be responding if price action were to take out this area right here. This is, you know, this really leads into the conversation of why it, I, I just don't understand the delusion, the the delusion that seems to be on all of the crypto, you know, social media uh, sites with looking at this from a bullish perspective. I, again, I want to be bullish. I want to be bullish more than anyone else because that's pretty of titties day when bitcoin gets back to twenty thousand, and i love titties but 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 even in the very low time frames not even breaking this ascending trend line that has been governing our lower highs in fact you even see it get weaker around this area uh you know at first it was you know it was getting the full dildo body to close there then wick then dildo body and then just a just a tight little wick once again and uh and almost immediately right back down so if we do break the 618, I would, I would feel pretty damn comfortable that we do come all the way back down to the 786 at around 3350 and test the supports as, you know, we just tested the resistance. But technically speaking, you will have a support right here at 3485, 3490, depending upon your exchange. And that will likely be the impetus for a small bounce, I'd imagine. But I do think that if it bounces, it would probably bounce back to the 618, get rejected, and then, and then you know, have that full fall through down at the 786, something like that. Of course, just like to the upside, uh, to the downside, I don't have full confirmation until we actually break this 786 uh, and also the bottom support trend lines of whether you look at this as a as a pennant or a descending triangle it's about the same at 3350 if that actually does break then that's when i i do believe at that point in time we will initiate a flush technically speaking you will have another support all the way down at your 886 Fibonacci retracement which also kind of lines up with our prior low at uh, 3250 right here um, but you know, I, I kind of have the same opinion on that as probably just a small bounce, maybe even come back and test 3,300. But, uh, but my, my real opinion is that that probably initiates a flush. Why do I say that? Why do I have that disposition? Well, going over here to our bitstamp chart and getting some actual color on these, uh, on, on these, on these dildos right now, we can see that if we put on, if we put on this, or sorry, let's actually just take that off and put on the volume profile. You can see on the volume profile, we're currently hanging on to the last high value node, which ends at around 3350-ish mark. Uh, after that, there's nothing doing. There's very low market acceptance, is, is you know, is the proper term, uh, between about low 3300 and uh, in mid to low 2000s. You'll notice that that is very similar to what Bitcoin had at the 6000 mark here. When it actually broke it, there's just nothing doing until the high 3000s to low 4000s area. So again, keep this sort of perspective in mind because if it does happen, it's likely to be a similar flush, obviously not as intense. I mean, that this was, you know, quite literally a gap of about 2000, a little bit more than $2,000 uh, at the 6,000 level. This one's more a gap of more uh, of more like about a, like 500 to 1000 bucks. Um, but again, you know, same, same sort of thing where Bitcoin just, you know, you've been consolidating for three months now. It's likely to <laughs> likely to likely to have kind of, kind of an explosive type thing. Let's actually look at our consolidation area ish type um, also it is and let's go put on the BBWs which again it's not the kind that you find in the secret TA but it's also but it is the kind that you can find in real TA and that is if we go to a daily which is where I want to be looking at this guy on this guy is going to be telling you about consolidations and you can see that the last time that we actually even got this low sorry I should explain what this is the BBW is just a <laughs> She's big, she's beautiful, <laughs> and she's a woman. <laughs> um, no, it's different. It is the Bollinger Bands with the Trollinger Bands, which I'm not a huge fan of, but they do help get this sort of thing um, typically right, and that is what we were looking at at the uh, 6,000 level to actually know when positions were, 
you know it was the right time to actually take a position anyways on the daily right here you can see that it's measuring the width and we have only gotten into this into this area on the daily you know a few times in Bitcoin's history and really when it does get down here it doesn't stay here for long and we're going to put this into context with a bunch of other things but really the last time that we were in this area was you know obviously November when Bitcoin well, you probably remember it broke 6,000 to 3,000. Uh, the times before that, it was it was not a break to the downside. This is not tell you about which direction it's going to break. But the last times that that uh, that the Trollinger bands were this you know this tight on each other, Bitcoin was in a more bullish market. So your consolidations are going to naturally break up to the upside more more often than not. However, in this market, when Bitcoin has literally been uh, in a downtrend for over a year since um, January of 2018, well. Probably more likely to break out to the downside. Again, if, if uh, Bears have been winning for the last year with all their massive red dildos, well, <laughs> it it works until it doesn't work, right? That's that's the saying that we used to say. It works until it does not work. I know that, uh, you know, a lot of people are not going to like that uncertainty within a statement like that. But, hey, it's fucking true, man. When it comes to technical analysis, you use it until it doesn't work, essentially. Um, let's see. You know, you can see very obviously that the volume characters of this are just that nice trailing off volume, even with Friday's green dildo party. Still not even out of the context of, of, what, of what got us into this area. So, to me, again, this is just consolidation. Consolidation coming off of a major downtrend, probably likely to lead to more downs right uh downs jesus christ man um let's see what are our daily stokes doing right now daily daily stokes are getting right back up to the edge of the bullish control zone but keep in mind this keep in mind this you know we looked at the trend line on the 12 hour before but I, actually now we do have one on the daily if bitcoin gets rejected i mean if, big, if bitcoin turns down here not necessarily get, gets rejected but if it turns down here it is signaling uh loss of momentum this goes all the way back to the september highs which let me remind you what price action was looking like at that time at that point in time that was this area right here like right before bitcoin got rejected from 7400 and went down to about 6000 in the span of a few days uh basically straight down so again that you know that peak and then the next peak i believe was this guy here on december 24th let's just make sure that that actually lines up going back Back on to our Stokes yeah this guy yeah December December 22nd one was, was when we put that in last and now we are once again you know finding resistance around this area so to me that would be that uh, that would be indicative of this area having high probability for you know turning down from this area I think that it does you know my, my opinion is that we do break this area head back down to the prior lows and, and do break that onto new lows I don't believe that the lows are in for Bitcoin I strongly believe that the, I strongly believe that the lows are not in for Bitcoin actually um, you know as long as you know as as far as the things that I look for for a major market cycle bottom uh, Bitcoin has none of the six things that I look for and if you want a full in-depth explanation of that definitely go check out the the playlist on my YouTube channel titled long-term analysis but I'll briefly mention them right now of course get go to that Playlist if you want, you know, much more in-depth details. But basically, Bitcoin spending the the time spent at the low way too fucking long. So that's zero for one. Bitcoin the percentage bounce off the low is not consistent with the way that Bitcoin typically plays out. It's more aggressive. Um, it's more aggressive uh, turnarounds. Uh, so that's zero for two. Bitcoin returning essentially back to the lows within a few percentages of it on a couple months later in February uh, from the December low over here. That's strike number three. Marks do not give you multiple times to buy the low as far as I'm concerned, especially with that close between each other. I mean, we can go look at an example of that actually really quick because I, do th I don't think I showed an example of this, but in 2014, you have a great example um, of what Bitcoin did over here. And you can see that you know, Bitcoin, while it did spend a lot of time going sideways around this area, it never really gave you, it, it was actually quite far away from the former lows, literally almost 50%. It was 45%, actually. If you take this wick over here, it's still about 30, you know, 32%, uh, th uh, 33%, whatever it is, you know, around there. Uh, right now, we actually came within about, I think, five or so, something like that. Let's see. Yeah, but sorry, less than five, 4% um, within the prior low. That is extremely inconsistent, inconsistent with the way that I typically see mark cycle lows being you know put through uh with regards to bitcoin of course every different asset has different personalities with how it does it and they might be a little bit less because bitcoin's you know obviously very <laughs> very violent and very um volatile but that's just a testament to bitcoin's personality uh what's the other ones well high volatility rank not signaling a massive low mbt signal which has called every major
major mark cycle low before and also mark cycle top actually uh not significantly low either and what else do we have i think that covers all six so zero for six is not good enough i mean even if it was three out of six i would still probably not be good enough but i am going to ma maintain this belief i'm going to maintain that that is the right way to be analyzing this as long as bitcoin is essentially below well I mean, especially below as long as it's below this 3700 resistance right here but that even if it got above there while i do believe that you'd probably have a rally into the four thousands um i don't think that that's 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 not a signal in and of itself that the bear market's over just yet if bitcoin could both open and close a a weekly total above this purple 200 exponential moving average at 4100 that would be that would be something to really consider but for now you know as as long as we are below that area with all the other assumptions in mind it's it it, it there's no reason to believe that but that also means that bitcoin could quite literally rally all the way up to you know 4100 and uh and still not you know change around the picture so again you know is that's that's you know about a 500 dollars rally it's quite significant um not only that but keep in mind and this is where things get a little bit more interesting because if we do put it on the monthly this monthly green 55 exponential is actually providing the impetus for res for resistance and the way that i look at it we have a slight wick above which is completely fine you can have a wick all the way above like we did on the prior in january but as long as we close this guy below by end of month uh end of month in february so another couple weeks uh then this will be actually the first monthly dildo to both open and close below the green 55 exponential not only that but i will now but i do consider this the these last three months of con uh, essentially of consolidation and with this consolidation i look at these two moving averages the 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential as an insight into where this is likely to get resolved towards and if that 10 simple crosses to the downside of the yellow 21 which it does have a much more steep slope i mean not not super steep i mean it's, it's definitely more steep than the 21 if they do cross then that is going to be my next big you know indicator that this is very likely to move further on downwards towards the next uh, the next major moving average which is uh 2450 um again 2450 does line up with a lot of other projections not only the monthly um major moving averages but also going down around here to our bitstamp chart we do have the 886 Fibonacci retracement coming around that area that is where bitcoin did bottom out in 2014 uh back in this area it is also some nice historical horizontal trend lines shut up car uh <laughs> sorry it is also the volume profile as we just looked at before uh coming in around there and and we do have some uh what else do we have uh we also have the the weekly um the weekly 377 exponential coming in right around there which is just something that typically holds a lot of weight in traditional markets i'm curious to see how it does in bitcoin land uh but yeah you know that's kind of what's battling right now so that 3700 mark is pretty damn important but from the monthly time frame that only needs to be closed below uh, you know by end of month so you could get you could theoretically get a run to 4,000 still close the monthly below that area and that would be incredibly fucking bearish um so again understand you know pretty damn natural to come back and retest an area like that so far it's been rejected um as you know and and i think it becomes a lot more visually apparent and uh and and obvious when you look at the other when you look at the other major cap alts let's go look at mr buterall over here mr buterall uh looking a little bit sick to me again just another rejection off of this trend line remember this trend line goes all the way back to when mr buterall was about 800 dollars in uh jesus christ it goes so far back i have to scroll yeah in may may of 2018 when it was quite literally 825 dollars ever since then it has not been able to get above this trend line and every time that it touches this trend line it, it initiates a pretty major dump um, looking at this guy right here you do see you, you you do see just another wick above I mean similar to, to the wick that we got above last night um, and I do believe that on our eight hour RSI yes we are we did lose the exponential we are kicked out of the bullish control zone also the eight hour Stokes heading heading, heading down and have plenty of room to, to move downwards let's go look at the 10 hour yep 10 hour same thing 12 hour 12 hour just cross down fresh cross down let's see i guess the daily probably hasn't then yet yeah but it is losing momentum and we do have some resistance around this area as you'd imagine um overall you know this is <laughs> i mean yesterday's daily does look like another rejection of this area even putting in a slightly higher high basically a stop run off of uh just yeah just take oh my god this is so nasty uh you're a nasty girl mr buterall uh 130 and 46 cent uh high yesterday taking out the taking out the prior high but it's it's just a fucking sell man that was just a a literal stop hunt um taking up you know price action above gets everyone stops who think that they're a genius you know shorting this area right here which you know probably the right trade probably the right trade um but when you place stop losses like that that is what that is what you leave your your bunghole open and open to so 
be aware of that. Angus is not safe in this market with static stop losses. Now, of course, there are, you know, I have my, my, my own ways of doing it. This is one of the reasons why I manage it, you know, more, more directly. If I'm at my computer, obviously, if I'm sleeping, you know, you have to do a stop loss, but there are ways around that as well. And so far today has just been another, you know, an, another try at the 0.5, essentially at 126, uh, 127. And so far rejected. Looks like we did close our first uh, daily below the 55 in a couple of days, uh, but that doesn't mean all that much by on its own. Today is a little bit less on. Uh, right here. I mean, yes, you did. You did kind of close a massive uh, long-legged doji on your last two-day dildo time. Uh, last two-day dildo, but it's it actually looks a little bit more, a uh, little bit less, a little bit less unhealthy, I suppose you could say. Um, not really getting too much else from from uh, from my all sorters here. But if we go down to the four-hour, we actually did have a perfect, an actual, uh, just. I mean, this this is almost fully 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 perfect this is like one tick below full perfect uh signal on the jewel with the with the light blue getting pulled into the pink which was pulled into the into the into my white and that told you to sell right here that was at 127 it looks like um so again you know jewel jewel getting it right and uh and while you know this thing actually is pretty damn close to getting a golden cross right now uh I do imagine that you're probably going to see some bot and algo activity uh, come into the next before the next close, which will also be the next 12 hour close. And we should see and, and, and I and I'm imagining that this probably does get contested. If not, then four hour dildo, uh, golden cross, you know, last time we had one was a pretty, pretty massive up uh, all the way over here in December 25th. Um, you don't get these often. Uh, before that, you know, your, your last golden cross was in May. I mean, before May, essentially, and getting ended in May before the death cross. So, you know, if this if this actually does get confirmed, I would be careful. I mean, that would be a very bullish thing. And these things ch typically do get, uh, as far as historically speaking, they actually do get played pretty damn well. So, again, keep that in mind. Um, definitely do keep that in mind. But overall, I, 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 I think I see a little bit more bad things than good things in this one. Um, you know, volume catch is still that of consolidation. Still just hanging around these areas. Um, and let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. Mrs. Litecoin also doing the same thing. Uh, basically, Mrs. Litecoin doing exactly what we said last night, hitting hitting the 142 area, almost uh, literally one cent below, actually. Nice, nicely done. Um, and rejecting from there, you know, yeah, as long as you're below 42 and a half bucks, I would be overall bearish on this guy. It doesn't mean that you can't get a bar back up above this area. But if it does get back into the 45 area, uh, I would be a seller there. Um, if I mean, if it even gets back above $42, I would, you know, you, it might even be worth a little bit of a buy for a scalp. Again, it's not financial advisor I'm not a financial advisor but just sharing my opinions on exactly what I do in these situations by the same token big support at forty dollars thirty nine and a half dollars in this kind of blocky territory I do believe that it probably breaks this um, over time uh, eight hour here does look Mm, what do we have to say about the 8-hour? 8-hour Stokes still headed down, still getting momentum down, but are getting a little bit more mature. 8-hour uh, RSI just in the neutral zone, not giving us too much. Uh, do we have any? Is a jewel giving us any signals? No, not nothing perfect. I don't I don't like those signals. Um, yeah, it's the, it's just like two two B type uh, signals is what I is what I look at. 12-hour um, here, you know, we just crossed our daily Stokes to the downside. What about daily? Yeah, da uh, daily Stokes just crossed the downside after a few snakes. Um, I believe that that you know that that typically will have some weight. And I, you know, my personal opinion is that this one sees a stab down to the thirty-seven, uh, thirty-eight dollar mark, um, sometime within like the next week or so, uh, is what I'd be looking out on this guy. But other than that, you know, daily daily RSI did just lose the exponential. Is trending below there right now. Um, you know, again, uh, you know, an event driven type thing, right? It, it has some some sort of an announcement that they changed their fucking logo or some shit, which is like that's asinine that that even changes a market around. It just shows how irrational this, this bitch is. Um, and uh, and just coming back up to the big breakdown level uh, from, you know, October, November. Right. And gets rejected right there. So, so far, you know, that to me tells me that we are still, you know, in the heavy grips of this uh, of this bear market territory. But hey, if that also means though, if Mrs. Litecoin was able to get above this, what is it like? Let's call it let's call it 48 bucks. And if you want to be more conservative, you could say like 51. Um, this is on it. If you can get above, this, I that would actually be the more traditional way of saying uh, for Mrs. Litecoin, bear market's over, baby. Uh, again, you know, it has some work to do, and so far it's been re it's been fully rejected from that area. But that's what I'd be looking for. You know, anywhere above fifty one dollars, I don't think that there's any more questions asked. Uh, I mean, I, I guess you could say 55 and a half, but I, I think it would get there if it did take out 50, 51, um, even 47 and a half dollars. You do have to be, you do have to have that on your mind. Um, so yeah, 
Let's go check out GBDC really quick. GBDC, uh, big down, completely erasing the days the days gains before. And look at this on GBDC, a very obvious ascending triangle, right? So it is interesting to me that we have both GBDC and spot charts uh, really in sync with each other right now. In fact, uh, neither one actually fully leading, but you can see a little bit easier on GBDC, I figure. And that and you see and you see this nice orderly drop off in volume again within this consolidation telling me that well it's a consolidation you have a nice little bear trap over here but then you get rejected at resistance over here and an apex on this guy all the way in where late march so again this one actually would suggest that it could take a little bit longer but uh to me this one looks like it wants to come down in the more immediate time frames we do have i believe our tr uh what, what is it like our four hour stokes they are coming down right now you do see that pretty easily um what about our eight hour eight hours probably still headed up yeah so again i do think that this one wants to come down a little bit more we did just lose the eight hour 21 exponential and i believe the four hour tw oh no we did not lose the four hour 21 but we lost 10 simple but that's not that's not a huge deal um so yeah, keep an eye on that one. Um, keep definitely keep an eye on that one. Oh, I should also say I'm not going to be on later tonight t today, or at least probably not going to be on later today because, well, if there's no prize action, there's no there's no real point. But also want to like go have dinner with Elsa, so that would be nice. Uh, but overall, GBDC, you know, does does look like pressure's on right now. Um, even if there was another run at this uh, 442 area, I think that that would be a sell. Um, so yeah, let's get back on over to Mr. Bitcoin. I want to show a few more things now. Let's go over to the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. And you know what? Yesterday, you'll remember that we saw this at a, at a 38. Guess what it is today? It's 48. This is the highest it's been, which is which is basically neutral. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, a 48 read in an overall bearish market is like uh, is like exu is like irrational greed. Um, but a 48 read is essentially, I think this is better to relate to on, on an actual chart, which you can see. This has been, go this has been governing our, our highs just about perfectly. Just about perfectly when, uh, if you were to make a trend line between all the highs, this was your February dump. This was your May dump from 10,000 to 6,000. This was your uh, early August dump from 8,000 to 6,000. This was your, well, th this over here was your September dump. Uh, this over here was your November dump from 6,000 to 3,000. And we are once again kind of, you know, if you made a trend line between these ones, we are pretty much right around there. I mean, these highs have like a nice orderly drop as well. You have a 74 read right here. That was again February. Uh, uh, May was 63, so you might be noticing a trend. Uh, November was 52, and we are now at 48. So we're in the zone where it does feel like there is, you know, people are probably going to be on the wrong side of the trade. Let's actually extend this just a little bit more. Let's go over to the uh, the uh, let's go over to data mission, see what the longs and shorts data says. We are at 22,000 open shorts now, 22,000 and a quarter, which really it's actually eight, it's a little bit under 19,000 open shorts because we have three, a little over 3,000 of these guys hedged versus 33,000 open longs. Again, this is, this is fucking insane. This is insanity. This is another, and you know, I should really make it seven reasons why I don't believe that the, uh, uh, the, the overall bottom is in, and this would be one of them. You want to see these opposite. You want to see shorts way, ab way ahead of longs. You want to see, you want to see like a 60, 40 imbalance, essentially, um, something like that. That way you have overhead liquidity to actually, you know, buy up into, uh, right now we have quite literally the opposite. We have, we, we have short liquidity, um, for, for, for bears to sell into essentially. Um, so let's go look at this on the charts and. And uh, again, longs are uh, are right at this critical area. I have I've marked this off with the horizontal. The reason why I did that is because anytime that longs get above this area, it actually does initiate a pretty nasty dump. Now it doesn't tell you when that's going to happen, but typically speaking, when you get back below that horizontal, that's when the dump you know commences. Of course, it's it's you know it's gotten as high as forty thousand before. But keep this in mind. Put this in context with the fear and greed index that we just looked at. Everyone's fucking long. People are neutral to in and i kind of read that as basically bullish basically greedy um and we haven't broken a major resistance longs are historically pretty fucking high right now again they can they can certainly get another you know seven thousand eight thousand higher historically speaking um in the more in the most critical areas but bitcoin has not even broken the smallest resistance that we've been looking at that 3700 level right and even that would not change around the picture at large. It needs to get back above, uh, you know, the, it needs to both open and close a weekly deal above 4,100, essentially. So it has a lot of work to do. That's what I'm trying to say. And where are you going to find these buyers? If, if everyone's already fucking bought, who's left to buy? Now let's go look at shorts. Shorts uh, shorts in real time are actually right at 22,000. They're about to drop below 22,000. So we have quite literally lost th over 3,000 shorts in the last two days. 
And if you want to go about a week back, we've lost about, uh, what is it, 6,000 shorts. So shorts are letting go of their positions, okay? And if they're letting go of their positions, then that means that they are buying, they're having buy pressure on, and price action is still not going up. It's actually drifting sideways to slightly down, if anything. So we have not broken even the most preliminary resistance at 3,700. People are getting more greedy. Longs are at historical, uh, historically on the higher side, and shorts are historically on the lower side. And might I remind you, every time that it does get down at a low 2,000s or especially below two, or sorry, in the low 20,000s or, or especially below 20,000, that's when major dumps have occurred in, in Bitcoin's history. This is your March dump from 10,000 to 6,000. This is your May dump from 10,000 to 6,000. This is your July dump from 8,000 to 6,000. This is your August dump from from uh, 7,500 7, to to 6,000. This is your November dump from 6,000 to 3,000 and we're once again getting near this range we're in uh, I'm gonna actually mark this off with a blue with a with a box it's anywhere in this range right here sorry let's actually get this right um, yeah that's uh, that's where major dumps typically do happen so it's it's a little bit lower right around 20,000 you know yes maybe I maybe I should include this uh, this spike here that was a nice dump indeed but didn't really break any major resistances so yeah you know keep these things in mind keep these things in mind that it's the the underlying mark dynamics favor the bears as well not only do, not only that but you know the price structure which is lower highs lower lows downtrend bear market <laughs> consolidation within a bear market probably gonna you know probably gonna lead on to some more downside let's go check out cmes right now uh cmes are interesting to me as well because they actually are giving a slightly different read we have the same formation same you know same formation we have that same orderly drop off in volume going from left to right over here and that tells me that this is likely a consolidation it, it's very it's it, i think that this one's a little bit more obviously a descending triangle uh than spot charts and if we bring up our oscillators right here we do have some nice hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point um, basically right at the edge of the neutral control zone. So that would be our, our January 9th highs and our, and the highs that we just put in, um, on uh, February 8th, again, no follow through as of yet. And that is, that hesitation is not good when, when a bear market actually does switch around, they don't give you like days. I mean, almost quite literally a week now to think about getting in out of, out of, at what is, what would relatively be a very decent price. Um, let's go to, uh, let's go to a different time, time frame. Let's go to a four hour, four hour Stokes still headed South. What about eight hour? Eight hour Stokes headed south. Ten hour Stokes still headed south, but losing momentum. Uh, Twelve hour just crossed to the downside, actually, just crossed to the downside and getting rejected right where, or perhaps getting rejected right where, right around the edge of the bullish control zone. So that would be a rejection from the bullish control zone as well. So keep these things in mind. I mean, not only that, but Bitcoin, you know, spot charts do have resistance around this area on the 12 hour. Uh, you know, basically the same thing as a daily, actually. But again, on the 12 hour, it doesn't go back as far as September. The daily, the daily resistance that we saw was born all the way from September. This guy actually is even a little bit more dubious, in my opinion, on the 12 hour, because these, this, these last two spikes, this guy right here, December 21st and uh, January 8th, those were the last two highs of this consolidation right here and right here, 4,200 and 4,100, uh, respectively. So again, to me, this is... We haven't seen anything change. We are just slowly seeing everything ground down. And the second that we lose 3550, I, <laughs> I think that you probably return to your prior lows. And you, <laughs> I mean, do you do you break the do you, do you break the prior lows on the next test? That's 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 more of a question that I don't really have an answer to. Um, but I would be saying that uh, pressure will be on once again. If if they do break, then yes, then I look towards the mid to low two thousands essentially. Uh, that's. You know, that's that's pretty much what I'm thinking right now. Uh, let's go check out something else. This is something completely new. This is OXT. This is basically giving stats on BitMEX's uh, wallets, right? And I thought it was pretty interesting, right? I, I thought it was pretty interesting because it shows you the money going into the exchange and coming out of the exchange. And you know, and you know what the imbalance is? <laughs> the, the imbalance is about three to one going in versus coming out. So again, money goes into exchanges. It never comes out. Which is actually kind of, in a way, if you think about it, it's kind of a good thing because BitMEX is basically a hodler, a forced hodler in the insurance fund, in a way. Um, but they're slowly soaking up all of the, slowly soaking soaking up, you know, shit tons of bitcoins. I mean, they have what is it, two, uh, two hundred, almost two hundred twenty thousand bitcoins. That's uh, quite a bit, quite a bit, ma'am. So again, you know, keep these things in mind. It, it, it is interesting. And you know, 200, 220,000 uh, bitcoins, right? What, how much would that actually be in relation to the total supply? We have there's 21, 21 million uh, for, uh, formerly present. And what's up, uh, Bear Jew? Good to meet you, man. Um, 
you know, that, that'd be like what a, t uh, a one hundredth, one one hundredth of the total supply is, is, is basically in BitMEX's wallet. <laughs> and they, I mean, I guess they probably, uh, do they use the insurance funds for like funding their own, their own activities? I don't know. Uh, I would assume probably not. Um, but uh but yeah it is interesting it is it is very interesting to me so yeah i think that might cover everything that i wanted to speak about um let me just oh let's go check out let's go check out uh traditional markets we do have something interesting to be uh we do have something interesting over here to be aware of uh daily daily did present d daily did print daily did close a potential reversal dildo it's once again on the table if we take out the low of 274 and a half then yeah i think that you actually do have a trade to the downside again not you this hypothetically you it's not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but, uh, but again, I do have my eyes on a potential reversal on this at some point in time. So anytime that it does show a little bit of weakness, I would be, you know, I think, I think it's worth a trade. It's a very easy trade to take because you don't have to risk all that much to know if you're going to be wrong. But then again, if we take out the high of today's dildo at 275 or basically 276, then we're going higher and it's in 278, 279, 290, or sorry, sorry, not two, 278 to 280 area would be the next area that I look towards. Uh, weekly still looks good, um, assuming that we do close up here. Uh, if, if, if it does close up here overall, I would not want to be too damn bearish because uh, you will be getting some nice crosses on your exponentials. But you know, daily daily does show a little a smidge of weakness. We do have our daily Stokes uh, crossing down once again. We do have daily will print some bearish divergence if if it does take out the low and closes the day below there. So you know that that could be a nice thing to be uh, to to be aware of. Um, does it play out or not? I, again, you're going to need to wait for price action to confirm. But if it does happen, I, I think that you probably have a nice trade back down at least to the 200 exponential at 269. So plenty of edge on that trade. Um, the the volume characteristics of this, you know, very similar to Bitcoin, uh, same, you know, consolidation essentially. So I would have the red alerts on. I would have the sirens on. But uh, wait for it. Wait for price action to confirm itself first. Um, OK, what else can we look at? Uh, let's look at the Bitcoin historical volatility index. Um, I think that this is quite interesting as well. We are again, you know, ba basically the same as the BB dubs uh, down around this uh, one, you know, this 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 one range, which essentially tells you that Bitcoin doesn't stay down here for long. And the last time that we were actually in this range was again uh, October, November before the big dump. Uh, the times before that were more happy times in April. Uh, sorry, April, tw yeah, April 2017 was certainly more happy time, but. For right now, that is uh, that is a current disposition. That is a current position. I'll just very quickly before I go, I'll take a look at the historical volatility rank. I'm curious what it is printing right now, uh, but again, I'm gonna I'm gonna imagine that it's probably just printing more more markers of consolidation. Uh, let's bring this guy up. It'll be at the at the bottom here. Credit to my man Bollyport for putting this one together. And I know I'm I'm know I'm using the wrong version, but I should, <laughs> but I just can't figure out which one's the right one right now. Um, you know, you have this very orderly drop off right over here, which again just tells you that this is all consolidation. Even with Friday's, you know, green dildo party, that didn't change anything. A am I open to things being changed? Absolutely. As a trader, you have to be agnostic when it comes to price action. But you also have to be realistic. Nothing's changed. Literally nothing's changed. We have more of the same is what it looks like to me. Um, and the historical volatility rank would be suggesting that we are getting very near the area where big moves typically do occur. Uh, we're, get, we're getting pretty damn close, but again, pretty damn close could like quite literally means to me about two weeks when we're looking at a time frame like this. So be aware of that. Uh, it, it, you know, <laughs> there's, there's multiple ways to be interpreting this, but uh, I, would, I would assume that the moving average actually is going up right now, but it was going up over here as well. Nothing really happened, right? So again, that's what I'd be looking at. Um, and I, I guess I'll quickly go over this as well, and then, and then I'll let you go. But uh, but weekly over here, you know, I see a lot of similarities between this area and this area. Not because I'm a fucking fractal or anything like that. I don't care for fractals. I don't think that fractals are. I don't know any professional who has who ever used. It's, it's, fractals are like Elliott waves. I don't know a single professional who actually uses them. I'm, am I saying that no professionals use them? I'm not saying that at all. I just don't know anyone who uses it. And this is coming from experience as being a professional market maker, authorized trader on the floor of New Stock Exchange, Ark, and then later above Chicago Board's Ops Exchange. Not a single person ever used one and it was typically spoken about in like in like you know in, in like in jest you know in in, uh, in joke in passing um any but i do believe that there's a lot of similarities between this guy and this guy look at the volume on this 
and this compared to each other and relate it to the volume of this in comparison to this, your more parabolic cycle. Now, just as an aside, when we actually, if and when we actually do see the more violent form of capitulation, which is not necessarily fully necessary, if that's not redundant enough, then I want to see the same volume characteristics on your parabolic cycle over here as I do on your actual capitulation. I want to see something, something related to each other. As you can see right now, this is nowhere near uh, each other. So Again, volume's not good enough, but my point is that this and this have a lot of similarities. We have a descending triangle getting resolved to the downside and having a nice 52% drawdown. Then in 2018, we have the same sort of thing. Descending triangle breaks to the downside and we have what? Well, I just took, I just took a little bit more, but it's basically uh, coming off this area right here. What do we have? Another like 51% drawdown. Okay, pretty damn similar. Uh, then we have a nice bounce back up. We have a nice bounce, uh, bounce back up of about 24% in 2014. And what do we have over here? We have a nice bounce, up, bounce back up of about 25%. Now this was done in 2014 over the course of about 12 weeks. Let's count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And 2018, or sorry, 2019 over here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, what we're working on right now. Now do these, now do these things have to be like perfectly identical in time? No. And in fact, I would argue that we're probably going to take longer in this segment over here, but a lot of people are looking at this higher high in 2014 and looking at this as fractal. And that means that, you know, you have to go onwards and upwards and test a 21 exponential, which I would say is unlikely. You actually cross a yellow 21 exponential in green 55 much more early in the 2018 scenario than you did in the 2014 over here. And that is, why I don't believe that they are related. I think that if Bitcoin did get some upwards momentum, it probably gets you know to the to the 200 exponential and probably you know closes a dollar below there, just basically confirming the former trend essentially. Um, once again, just another another rejection. But my point is is that we can actually look at a completely unique indicator. We can look at the MBT signal, which is divorced from the price, volume, and time indicators that we typically look at. Uh, it is you know it's it's completely external. It's 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 a fundamental indicator is what it really is. It's a network value divided by the daily transaction value. And we actually get the same read in both these areas and it's very interesting because you know again network value divided by divided by the daily transaction value but we're getting the same sort of we're getting literally the same area uh this is this is the area in question in 2014 and then if we bring up the mbt so this is this is that 2014 area right where the mbt comes all the way down after that 50 percent downtrend you know puts in a low spikes up comes back down to lows and then puts in a higher high then rolls over as it gets you know wrestled by the uh, by the orange moving average i'm going to fast forward into 2019 and you can see something very similar actually, but different on price action. You see, you know, your, your nice 50% drawdown, put in a low, pump up, come back down to lows, put in a higher high, come back down to lows, put in another higher high right now is what we're doing. And actually we do have what is known as divergence now. When the oscillator is making higher highs, price action is making lower highs. Price action is making lower highs from this point to this point, although we're making significantly higher highs on the MBT. So to me, again, this is, you know, <laughs> unlikely to end well. Uh, and we are making significantly higher highs right now. So we're getting a very similar read on the MBT, even though price action is not the same between those two things. And that is why I do believe that, uh, you know, fractals are, are very, fractals are very, misleading because it doesn't give you the full the full picture uh with the indicators we can get a little bit more of a read into it and i think and i believe that, that is kind of what's happening i think that we've already just put in that area most likely i think that's probably the most likely thing but again as always have to be agnostic as a trader if bitcoin gets back above uh, the 0.5 uh, basically 3700 then you know i don't see anything stopping me from 4000 yeah technically you have resistance at 3900 uh, by the same token if bitcoin takes out the 618 then probably has a a quick move down to the prior lows at 3350, 3400, and then if that area breaks, then likely new lows into the mid to low for, uh, 2000s, I'd imagine. Um, so again, that's gonna do it. Hey, oh, we got someone new in here. What's up, Julius? Good to meet you, man. Julius Brand, Brandle, Brandy. What's up, man? Good to meet you, man. And and I do want to also say, hey, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, I probably will unlikely be on later today, unless if there is price action, which it actually does feel like this thing's pretty damn mature and, and is ready. A more in a more literal sense for the lower time frames to be very clear um so again you know i, I probably won't be on later today I, I might do a little bit of an earlier stream but i would like to also go out to dinner later later tonight um, and enjoy a nice little uh, nice little night so again guys wishing you a well a well and uh a well and restful thursday um thursday afternoon or whatever time it is in your part of the in, in your part of the world i hope that uh hope that hope that that's all uh, <laughs> i hope that i can speak fucking properly jesus christ man 
It's like it's like I'm assaulting your ears with just mumbling and <laughs> and bad words. But hey, uh, again, pleasure to speak with you all, and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. I'll be back on if not if not later today, then then tomorrow for sure. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys there, and take care.